Jessica Tandy and Hume Cronin in The Marriage. <laughs> Sponsors of this program offer no endorsement of the opinions, philosophy, stubbornness, or confusion of the persons represented therein. However, with the conviction that marriage remains the most popular domestic arrangement between friendly people, NBC takes pleasure in presenting by transcription one of the most distinguished couples in the American theater, Jessica Tandy and Hume Cronin as Liz and Ben Marriott in the new dramatic series, The Marriage. Renaissance, uh, so I'm told. Families pass the evening with eight-part madrigals, string quartets, and the reading of epic poetry. Well, the Marriott living room is not exactly Florentine, but evenings at home occasionally do have a Renaissance touch. The other night, Pete sat on the floor creating with affectionate detail a 1906 Overland runabout. Emily was staring out of the window at the brick wall across the way, seeking exactly the right word for a literary effort while Ben did the double caustic from the Sunday Times. The Da Vinci atmosphere, unfortunately, stopped with me. Hey, hey, look out. Lift your feet. What are you doing? Dusting. Down there? The club chair, even as you and I, has feet. Lion paws, as a matter of fact. Lion paws? Ah, I never noticed. They are, aren't they? This lion has come overland through the Sahara. Uh, do you have to do that now? Why not? Mm. Who is the right-hand man of Edward the Confessor? Who wants to know? The puzzle. I tried Athelstane and Edelbert. They didn't fit. I'm not surprised. Pete, can you move some of that debris? Why, Mom? I'm dusting. Now? Do you mind? No. It's all right with me. Thank you. Mom, was the clutch on the 1906 Overland on the left or on the right? Ask your father, dear. He was always the expert on clutching. Oh, oh dear. The radiator's starting. Ethelred, Ethelbert, Adelpate. Oh, Ben. Mm-hmm. Doesn't it bother you? It certainly does. Edward the Confessor. Ah. I mean the radiator. The radiator? Oh, it's warm enough in here. I mean the banging. Oh, that. I don't see how you can concentrate on anything with that knocking. Oh, it's just a matter of being interested. I don't even hear it. I didn't hear a thing. Well, I think it's nerve-wracking. Oh, I don't know. It's got a lot of rhythm. To, to, tango. To, to, tango. Dun, da, dun, da, dun, da, dun, dun. Oh, lay! Well, I think it's awful. It's like living on the Aberdeen Proving Grounds. I'm going to get Mr. Lemberg up here to have him do something. <laughs> Mr. Lemberg is a sweet old gentleman with a soup strainer mustache and bushy gray hair. He's the superintendent of our building, and, and he fights a losing battle with the machine age. I asked him to come up the next afternoon. The radiators were playing Savinsky's right to spring when he rang the buzzer. All right, all right, Mr. Lemberg. You want me, Mrs. Marriott? Come in, Mr. Lambert. Uh, thank you. It's the radiators. You don't get enough steam? Oh, yes, yes. They rattle. They do? They bang terribly. Oh. I don't hear nothing. Well, they were firing a fusillade till you came in. They're just hiding in ambush now. Oh, yeah, Mrs. I understand. Them radiators are sneaky. Yes, they are. Did you notice no, that? Oh, sure. They probably knew I was coming. I didn't mention it. No, they got ways. Remember, there is pipes running through the whole building. I've often worried about that. Mrs. They know them radiators. If I'm in my good suit on Sunday, bang, 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 bang. All I got to do is change into overalls and hold up a wrench. Nothing. It doesn't seem quite honest, does it? Sneaky. It's a little like our refrigerator door. Oh, you got trouble with that? Oh, it sneaks up on you. Yeah. If you're bending way over to get something way in the back, it sort of sidles up behind you and... Oh. It's cold, yeah. The radiators are the worst. Ours seems awfully clever. Oh, smart, them radiators. Always thinking. Do you think we have a chance against them? Listen, missus. They got their job. We got ours. 
We've got to keep trying. Even though we're outnumbered? Yes, yes. Well, we fool them. Next time they start up, you send for me right away. I won't say anything out loud. Oh, you bet. We get them, missus. Well, goodbye. Thank you, Mr. Lambert. That's all right. Oh, Mrs. Marriott, uh, you going to do washing today? Why, yes, I, I was. Well, look out for that washing machine on the left. It's been mad all morning. So mad. I don't know why. It always used to be so friendly. Well, goodbye, Mrs. <laughs> By supper time, the radiators had settled down to sporadic small arms fire. Ben and the children were quite conspiratorial all through dinner. I couldn't imagine why till after. Mommy, we've got a surprise for I you. I got it. Here it is. What is it? Open it. I haven't seen it myself. Oh, but you shouldn't have done it. I wanted to. Oh, you shouldn't have. Uh, painter mat kit. You see, Mom? O- open the box. What is it? Canvas for painting pictures. But uh, it's all written on. Well, don't you see? The picture's all ready for you. All these little lines show where the colors go. See, every section is numbered. It looks like a map of a housing project. The paint has numbers, too. Hey, that's clever, isn't it? Oh, you shouldn't have done it. Believe me, Ben, you shouldn't have. We thought it would be just the thing for you, Mommy. They're complete instructions. The man said a child with six could follow him. Uh, left a small margin for safety, eh? Now, Liz, it's a start. Well, you can't go wrong. The pictures are pre-tested. On children of sex. Do you think maybe I'd be too old? Oh, no, Mother. Gosh, look at Grandma Moses. This can give you a creative outlook. It's foolproof. And I'm just a fool to prove it? Mom, don't you like it? Oh, of course I do, darling. It was, it was very sweet of both of you. Of all three of you. <laughs> It was very sweet of the children. And in a way, they were quite right. I used to put a lot of creative energy into my job. And then when the kids were young, that was a big undertaking and a satisfying one. But now when they didn't need me every minute, perhaps I tended to lose myself in things like like dusting. I did need some way to be creative. Pete's right. (laughs) The instructions do say a child of six could follow them. Ben, Marriott, you put them up to this. No, no, I didn't. Emily said they wanted to buy you some painting things. Uh, I didn't know they had a painter map in mind. Painter map? I think it's very clever. Well, I'm afraid I've got to do one of them. The kids would be heartbroken if I don't. What have we got? Let's see. Sunset at sea. Night watch. End of the trail. And the cord of the narrow. I'll try that. I'd like to see a picture of the court of Nero that was pre-tested on six-year-old children. Oh, Grandma Marriott went at it. I squeezed the tiny tube of number 76, which turned out to be a sort of mud green, and carefully filled in space 76, which turned out to be a section of anatomy of one of the court ladies. The painter mat company evidently was privy to several extremely advanced six-year-olds. To tell you the truth, I enjoyed it, in spite of the instructions. The next day, on my way home from the supermarket, I wandered into the community center. Can I help you? I'd like to ask about painting. Oh, of course. Now, which kind would you like? Sketch, water, oil, pastels, landscape, and light. You have to be married for light. Well, I didn't know you were so strict. My marriage is fairly stable, but you never can tell, can No, 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 no. I mean, life class. They use models, so we have to be careful. I I understand. I think uh, that's a little advanced for me. Do you have anything for beginners? Oh, yes, yes. That's our Mr. Dandria. He's on television. I didn't know they had artists on television. Oh, yes. Yes, he draws Vicky the Weatherbird for the Midnight Weather Report. He sounds formidable. Oh, no, Mr. Dandria is wonderful with beginners. He makes it so simple. Why, it could be followed by a six-year-old child. I could see that the art world was kept to my level. Wherever I turned, I was immediately classified by the other six-year-olds. I signed up for the class and bought a small set of oils, brushes, and charcoal. 
The family was very understanding. Now, remember to button your smock up to the neck, Mom. That's the blouse I want to borrow this weekend. I'll try to be careful. Mom, can I give you some advice? Of course, Pete. Listen in class. Yes. And do what the teacher says. I'll try. It pays off. I'm sure it does. Well, I suppose I might as well go. Liz. Liz, wait a minute. Did I forget something? Let me look at you. Why? Whenever I see them go off to school for the first time, I just get a big lump right here. You look out or I'll give you a big lump somewhere else. And so with head held high, a furtive tear lurking in my eye, I brave the new world of the community center adult beginner's art class. We all perched on high stools in front of our easels and waited for the master. My neighbor on the right was a large, cheerful woman, Mrs. Joachim. And so I told Max, you put the kids to bed. Tonight, I'm going to learn painting. He says to me, what do you want to learn painting for? You're another Toulouse Lautrec? Isn't that silly? <laughs> it certainly is. I don't even look like Jose Ferrer. Have you ever painted before? I couldn't even draw a straight line. Actually, I come to see Mr. Dandria. Do you think he looks like on television? I've never seen him on television. Is he handsome? I don't know. All you see is his left wrist when he draws the weather bird. He has very attractive knuckles. That's half the battle, isn't it? Mm. Oh, here he is. You recognize the wrist? Who else would wear a beard and a scotch plaid beret? It was Mr. Dandria. He hung his red serape on a hat rack and started right in. Now then, everybody. Three quarters of the way up the paper, about four inches from the left-hand side, draw a small circle. Ready? Like this. Oh. <laughs> there. Oh, look at that, a small circle. Oh, Max should be here. Uh, Mr. Dambia. Uh, questions later. Uh, what are we drawing? Uh, don't worry, Mrs. Uh, Maria. I never lost a student yet. I don't like to be surprised. Inhibited, Mrs. Larry? Uh, yes. A weak heart. Well, <clears throat> I won't keep you in suspense. The first drawing is Dickie the Weather Bird. Oh, that's wonderful. <laughs> the Weather Bird. <laughs> Mr. Danbeer went on. We drew by numbers. Circles, squares, wavy lines. Hup, top, thrup, four. And eventually, on 12 easels, there were 12 exact reproductions of a scrawny chicken with windblown wattles. Ben was waiting up for me when I got home. How'd it go? Fine. Fine. Anytime you want a drawing of Dickie the Weather Bird, feel free to call on me. How'd you like it? I was expelled. Expelled? <laughs> really, Ben. It was as ridiculous as that awful painter mat, and I told him so. What did you say? He invented the painter mat. <laughs> the family took my expulsion from art class philosophically. Pete even restrained himself from saying, I told you so. Gradually, the sector of mothers, Grandma Moses, faded. But now I had a guilty secret. In the daytime, when everybody was safely occupied with the world's affairs, I plied my clandestine art. I had sniffed the heady aroma of turpentine and I was hooked. Presumably, I would soon be injecting it directly into an artery. Once I was caught red handed, well, uh, blue handed, as a matter of fact, a uh, cobalt blue. Mm. What are you doing, lady? Huh? Oh, how did you get in? Lundberg let me in with the pass key. I'm the plumber. Oh. Oh, the plumber. Mind if I set my tools down? Are you supposed to fix the radiator? Yeah. How do you like that? Radiators after all these years. You don't like radiators? Oh, it ain't that. I can take them and let them alone. You see, lady, I'm a sink man. A sink man? Lady, I can tell what a sink is stopped up with just by listening to the gurgle. I used to be able to do that with a baby. It's much the same. Except, of course, the new garbage machines on a drain. That would be a little complex. Oh, it isn't that. I keep losing fountain pens down there. You know, lean over to look at the sink. The pen falls out of your pocket. <laughs> That's all. We don't have one. Besides, one of those machines, you identify your garbage. Maybe you got company in the front room. All of a sudden, they hear... <laughs> they know what you're doing that machine. They do? 
sounds like a great parlor game. Well, I don't want to keep you from your work. Uh, I'll just go on with what I'm doing. Uh-uh. What? Huh? Uh-uh. What do you mean, uh-uh? Well, lady, a yellow cow is uh, unnatural. Look, young man. If I want to paint it puce with cinnamon stripes, that's my affair. I've had enough art instruction. If I want advice about stuffed sinks, I'll come to you. But in the meantime, I'll stuff my own sink. I mean, I'll paint my own picture. Well, okay, okay, lady. Don't get sore. If you want to make it a jurisdictional dispute, okay. Let's leave it that way. Okay, okay. Who ever heard of a yellow cow? It was a few weeks later that I was exposed. Emily was rummaging in the storage closet looking for ice skates when she turned off my hidden hoard of canvases. She brought them out into the living room, all tied together. Daddy, look what I found. Emily, you put those back. What are they? Well, canvas boards for paintings. Liz, those yours? Um, You've really been painting. That's wonderful. Oh, they're nothing, really. Uh, what's on television? Hey, kids, we're going to have a one-woman show. Pete? Let me hear Scout and I. Uh, sure, Pop. Now, stop it, Ben. I think it's very exciting. Emily, Pete, everybody, let's sit down. Oh, well, they're nothing, really. Let's see. Well, all right. You see, I I wanted to paint some of the things I remembered when I was a little girl. You know, the, the country, the old houses, the, the farm animals next door. I mean, anybody can paint them better, but I'm the only one who remembers them the way I do. The whole thing seemed to be... Uh, slipping away from me. And I did want you to understand. The children, too. Let's see what they look like. There. Well, now, this is the barn at the Slocums next door. Uh-huh. This one is the old house, the rock in front. We used to sit on that and pretend it was a throne. Uh-huh. And this, this is... Uh, don't you like them? Oh, they're, they're very nice, Mom. Yeah. Yeah, they're, they're very interesting. Oh, yes. Yeah. Well, it's the kind of thing Norman Rockwell draws for the Saturday Evening Post. Don't you just love his drawings? I mean, they're so real. But these are not supposed to be real. I, I was just remembering. Oh, of course, dear. It's been a long time. I could draw better when I was five. Pete. Well, I could. A yellow cow. Now, Liz, pay no attention to that. These are... They're... Uh, you know, the uh, the chimney isn't in the right perspective. Would you like me to show you about the vanishing point and parallel receding lines? No, no, I, I, I don't care about perspective. As a matter of fact, I'm sick of the whole business. Where are you going? I'm going to throw them all in the trash can. No, wait a minute, Liz. I'm I... all through with them anyway. Oh, wait a I minute. Have you haven't... I'm not of painting them. I knew what I was thinking of, even if nobody else did. Liz, these were your first paintings. Naturally, they're a little... But they're very nice. I'm sure you'll improve with practice. What's the use? Pete could draw better when he was five. There. Now let's forget about the whole thing. They were all very nice to me. They took me out to dinner to Emily's favorite restaurant. And we all had Pete's favorite food to cheer me up. Then added to the celebration with a movie in the evening, which he'd been very anxious to see. It was Moulin Rouge, which I thought was most appropriate. All about poor Toulouse Lautrec who wanted to paint. But Mrs. Joachim was wrong. She looked exactly like Jose Ferrer. About a week later, things were back to normal in the Marriott Menage. Hey, hey, look out. Lift your feet. You just dusted this chair. That was two weeks ago. Lift. I thought oh. they were supposed to be fixed. They were. Oh, Ben, this is too much. It's ridiculous. I'm going down to get Mr. Lemberg right now. All right. I'll get rid of that banging if they have to rip out the whole steam system and go back to a pot-bellied stove. I marched down the stairs to the rhythm of a pipe playing a farandole which increased in tempo as I went along. So by the time I rang Mr. Lemberg's door, I was short of breath and shorter of temper. Yeah? Oh, Mrs. Marriott. Mr. Lemberg. I know, Mrs. It's the radiator sandwich. 
Well, they stopped. I just got out the ranch. You've got to do something, Mr. Lemberg. They're just sitting there trying to drive me crazy. Like in the movies, yeah. Nobody believes you, as I understand. Well, I get my tools, Mrs. Oh, come in. Come in. Sit down. Thank you, Mr. Lemberg. I'll be ready in a moment. I stepped into Mr. Lemberg's basement apartment and stopped short. There, on the walls, in the most beautiful carved wood frames, were my pictures. All of them. Well, I'm all ready now, Mrs. Mr. Lemberg, those pictures... Oh, yeah. Funny thing. I, I found them in the trash. Somebody just threw them away. I, I had these frames. My father was a wood carver in the old country. <laughs> they just fit, don't they? Mr. Lemberg... You like these pictures? Well, I tell you, Mrs. Marriott, I am in this country maybe 30 years. I'm a citizen. My son was in the army in the war. But still, you you got to remember how it was when you were a little fella. You know? I know. I, I saw those pictures in the trash, and right away I remembered. Now, look, those hills could be the short spot when I was a little boy. No, not exactly, but that's the way I remember it. And in the bright sun, the cows look yellow. With the trees big, very big. And the shadow was very black and terrifying. Yeah, and that village, well, that village could be Ditterstorf, just like I remember. The houses look like people. Fat little people with staring yeah, eyes. Yeah. And the church tower like a tall, thin schoolmaster. That's it, yeah, just like Herr Schnabel. Mrs., was you ever in Ditterstorf? No. No, not exactly. Mrs., I give you one. Oh, no. Now, listen, why not? Somebody threw them in the trash. Why shouldn't you enjoy them? But, but Mr. Lemberg, with the frame... Oh, I got lots more. Papa was always carving. You should see the kitchen chairs. Now, uh, here, Mrs., Mrs. You, you take this picture. Eh? Oh, oh, thank you, Mr. Lemberg. Oh, you don't know what a wonderful present this is. Uh, so. Now we get them crazy radiators. Ben and Liz Marriott will be back in just a moment. In the meantime, let us extend an invitation on behalf of our stars, Jessica Tandy and Hume Cronin, as well as the National Broadcasting Company, to all of you to drop by next week at this time for another half-hour observation and transcription of The Marriage, written by Ernest Canoy. Emily and Pete Marriott were played by Denise Alexander and David Pfeffer. Mr. Lemberg was Bill Griffiths, Miss Keynes, Anne Petoniak, Mrs. Joachim, Adelaide Klein, Mr. Dandria, Burford Hampton, and the plumber was played by Ralph Bell. The Marriage is an NBC radio production directed by Edward King. This is Bob Denton speaking. Mr. Lemberg had the pictures up on his wall? Oh, he was so sweet. He said they reminded him of his childhood. You know, Liz, looks fine hanging there. It's a beautiful frame. Reminds me of Central Park when I was a kid. Oh, oh Ben. Oh, Ben, thank you. <laughs> Good night. Good night, darling. Make kitchen chores lighter with music and drama on the NBC radio network.